Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Once again, I'm Ned from Nez Tech, but today we're checking out the TP-Link Wi-Fi range extender slash repeater. So the difference between a repeater and a extender, the repeater isn't connected hardwired to the bottom. You do that, if you run the cable and hook this up somewhere else, then uh, it'll be much more powerful than it would be in repeater mode. And in repeater mode, it's just uh, repeating the information going through the air anyways through the wi-fi but it slows everything down because it takes up valuable bandwidth in order to do that this lady ladies and gentlemen is large and in charge so let's take a look at some of the features directly on the unit we have cooling apparatuses on either side we have ethernet nothing on the bottom over here on the right we have the reset we can turn the leds on or we can turn the power on and off it is very it uh it works it just works those aren't screws, they look like Torx bits. But yeah, the unit uh, is a pretty good size. Right down here you can see a Lego man for scale. Also, here's a banana for scale. This thing is huge compared to the other one. Large and in charge, of course. We get our antennas out at the side. Let's hope those suckers work. Over here, of course, we got the place where we plug in the router directly. Oh, and we even get a third one. That makes it look so happy. We can put a happy face right there. Yeah, so let's get this bad boy tested. Okay, so let's stick in and press play, right ladies? Make sure you download the Tether app. You gotta wait a sec, and then once this thing kicks in, we can have another look. So it's really easy to get this stuff going. Download the Tether app, tell it it's a range extender, and once make sure the power LED is solid on. So what you need to do is you need to jump onto the Wi-Fi and uh, when you jump onto the Wi-Fi, there'll be no password. You just jump onto it, then press next. And now I have to make uh, a local password. It's for security reasons, just do it. Next up, you select the 2.4 gigahertz uh, unit that you want to extend. Next up, we just gotta tell it what 5G band to use. There, that looks better. Mild-mannered Clark Kent. No one would ever expect he's actually a range extender. We got Clark here, all hooked up, good to go on the 2.4 and the 5G remember if you don't plug this thing in directly then what you need to do is put this in about the halfway point towards your dead zone don't just take this into your dead zone plug it in and hope that it works got to be about 50 percent there if you want more power just plug the thing in seriously it'd be so much more powerful next up let's see where it put itself within the wi-fi channel bands and as we can see it's not actually so bad it found itself a nice little spot within the your fault arc the D-Link though is out for itself. It put itself in a nice band in the 2.4G. Let's check out the 5. Yeah, once again, it put itself in a very reasonable spot. It looks like it chose to put itself directly in uh, with uh, the thing that's extending directly. Unfortunately, this comes up as a different Wi-Fi band and you have to connect to it manually. After a basic speed test downstairs, they did a relocation. So here we go, 68.68 uh, .68 megabits downloaded. It was only at about 30 before I moved its location from one side of the room to the other. But I'm going to hardwire this thing and then see what the difference is going to be like. I am going to uh, try a bit of games up here to see if I disconnect it all. Oh, of course, over on the far left is my Alexandrian backup. That's where I keep all of my uh, information. And over here, I will be doing a direct transfer test to see how fast is a maximum local transfer. Now, when you get one of these things going, you got to remember, you're not just dealing with the external internet, you're also dealing with your internal speed. So by using the internal speed, I can see what the top speed of this unit actually is. Local transfer test and go. Well, it'll get the job done, but it definitely isn't at max spectrum, that's for sure. If it's transferring at N speed, then I usually get one megabyte a second. But if it's transferring on AC, I usually get about 10. Got the Xbox warmed up and I threw down for about three hours on multiple video games while chatting to my friends and the chat was fine. No problem at all with the chat, but I was having some problems with the gameplay. At First, I was getting disconnection warnings, and then um, I was having a little bit of lag. Nothing like I was experiencing with uh, with N version routers. 
Next up, I'm going to try one more time after hardwiring this system to see if it improves the system speed. Well, this is a little bit disappointing. It turns out that the connector over here on the left, I thought it was supposed to hook directly into your router so that you could get 100% potential from your networking equipment and from your Wi-Fi, but it turns out it's just another way to set the unit up directly with a computer in case you don't have a cell phone. I'm kind of blown away by this. So the test that I was doing before, that's about the best that you can expect out of this thing. It's definitely not good for gaming. However, the range definitely is there. So let's take a step back. We can't get the speed we want on this. So so I guess all we can do now is uh, test out the range and see how far we can get. All right, time for a range test. Over here we got the AC1750, and over here we got its much younger brother. So, so much younger, it was just a happy accident younger. And, um, yeah, yeah, this is N brand, 320 bucks. Let's see if, let's see what the range is like, shall we? Oh, yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, folks, so here you can see the TP-Link range extender. That is the N300 unit, and um, your fault extended is the uh, more powerful version. Watch it click in and out. So right now I'm downstairs, and that 300 system seems to be making a good impact. Anyway, so going to the end of my basement, going upstairs. I'm directly above it now. Now I'm going to move to the other end of the place. I'm at the other end of my townhouse, at the front instead of at the back. And the end seems to have disappeared. Let's take a look at the 5G. My children are having a bath. If you hear any screams, you know why. Next up, I'm gonna go upstairs. All right, we're upstairs. Now, we'll go into the room of Wi-Fi death that no Wi-Fi from the basement can ever reach. And they're both gone. That's just how she goes. And there it comes up as soon as I leave the room. What the heck? Alright, so at the end of the day, it ain't bad. It ain't bad. It's not what you want for gaming though. And if you are in a smaller kind of unit, maybe medium sized house, this will definitely boost your range. But if you really want to boost your range, what I recommend you do is put your primary modem or your primary Wi-Fi unit on your main floor in the center. That'll help you out more than anything. If you're a gamer, don't even worry about range extenders. Just get a hard wire. That's what you need to do. Just hard wire. Just to forget about it. Just, just hard wire. Just do it. And I would avoid the end unless you were just uh, not gaming so much. But definitely capable. Not the best for video gaming. Got a hard wire for video gaming. And the range is quite good, actually. I'm pretty surprised with it. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. Nev from Nev's Tech. But it's like and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. It's always appreciated. And as always, folks, take care of each other.